What's up guys, welcome back to Pat Outdoors. This is gonna be part two of the Yasma IN10 Supermoto project. At this point, we already have the new Soshin FW22 brushless motor installed, along with a few aesthetic items, such as this new plastic set from Yasma, custom seat cover from Bolts and Bolts, some Supermoto wheels and street tires from Ride or Die, along with the adjustable fork tubes from Ride or Die. We also started removing some of the electronics that we're no longer gonna need for this project, such as the stock 48 volt battery and the far driver controller. Since I am shooting for big power on this bike, minimum 14 kilowatts, we're definitely gonna have to go with much higher voltage and install a much more capable controller. I'm gonna continue removing some of the electronics that we're no longer gonna use, such as the original harness for the far driver controller, along with these brake safety switches on both brake master cylinders. I'm also gonna get rid of this display since our new controller should be coming with a new one. We're pretty much just gonna leave the stock Suron style throttle, keyed ignition, and the LED headlight and switch. Everything else wiring related is coming out since we're pretty much starting from scratch with whatever comes with the new controller. I wish they used different sleeving. This is gonna take forever. I am probably gonna reuse this stuff though, once we get everything installed, since I do like how clean it looks. Just gonna display. Now that we got all that sleeving removed, we can remove all the electronics one by one. Just gonna leave the headlight switch here. Disconnect the throttle. And that's how you remove the stock main harness. Just removing the brake safety sensor since I never use these. Not really a big fan of the throttle being disabled whenever I hit the brake. So this kind of just makes it like a real dirt bike. Here it is all stripped down. We just have the throttle connector, ignition switch, phase wires from the motor, hall sensor. Now that we got the rest of the unnecessary wiring and electronics removed, let's go check out the controller that we got for this thing. So this is actually the first time I've ever used one of these Moxin controllers. So I have no idea what it comes with. That is a huge controller. Look at that. So I have an upgraded controller on my Talaria. I have a nuclear P24F and it is significantly smaller than this, but this is supposed to be a lot more capable. I have no idea how we're gonna fit this on a little Yasma IN10. The kit I purchased is actually for a Suron Light BX. So here's everything that came with the Moxin controller kit that I got from Electric RVA. Billy over there has been very helpful with any questions I've had throughout the purchasing process. So I highly suggest you reach out to him if you are interested in one of these controllers. So of course it came with the controller itself with the main harness already attached. This is pre-wired for a Suron Light BX specifically. You've got the controller user manual display. I went with the three inch. They offer three different kinds. There's a three inch, a five inch, and a seven. I wanted to get the lowest profile one because we are putting this on a pit bike, so I don't want it to be too bulky. Got the install toolkit with the boots for the phase wires and the battery terminals, along with the hardware for the posts on the controller. Left combination switch, right combination switch. Automotive electrical tape to clean things up once you have everything installed. The display mount. The encoder to hall sensor converter harness. We're going to be using this on our setup since I went with a Soshin FW22 brushless motor with the hall sensor connector. But obviously you don't need to use that if you are using this on a encoder motor. OTA harness. I believe this is used to update the controller periodically. The connector seems to be the same as the display connector. Should be able to just connect through this plug and connect to your computer. GPS power supply linear electronic brake lever or regen braking and a 12 volt power supply. This is pre-wired specifically for the Light BX. 
So this is gonna to connect to all the accessories such as the horn, headlight, taillight, and whatnot. But we're likely not gonna be using that for this setup. So why did I decide to go with a Moxon controller? Well, I haven't seen anybody install it on a pit bike or one of these smaller bikes before. I've only seen them installed on Suron Light Bees and Ultra Bees and a couple Talarias. So I thought it'd be pretty interesting to do something different with these since everyone seems to have a far driver controller on them, similar to the one on my Tudio. The Moxon controllers are most commonly known to be the wheelie controllers, but besides that, they're actually very capable. This model that I went with is rated for 16 kilowatts and has a peak output of 1100 phase amps. Just to give you some perspective, the Far Driver ND72 530 that's installed on my 72 mile an hour Tudio has a peak output of 530 phase amps. So we should be able to pull some serious speed with the Moxon controller. Just want to quickly give you guys some perspective on how much larger the Moxon controller is compared to the stock Far Driver controller. Like, look at that. It's almost twice as tall. Though it is almost the same height. And the center back side seems to be relatively narrow. So hopefully we should be able to tuck it fully in the frame. I'm definitely going to have to remove these posts for the stock Far Driver. So I think I'm going to start with the handlebar area and get the display on, the left and right side controls, regen braking, and just start chipping away at it one by one just to get an idea how we're going to route the wiring. And then we'll mount this on. We're definitely going to have to do some modifications to this area of the frame. I was hoping that this bracket on the Yasma is bolted on, but if you look closely, it is welded all around. So we're just going to have to work with this plate. What I'm thinking about doing is just re-drilling the holes up top. So we can just use that as a mounting point for the top of the Moxon. And then for the bottom two, same thing. Probably gonna create two mounting holes down here. I may even try to reuse these posts to keep the controller elevated and far away enough from this plate so the phase wires don't come close to the frame. I'm gonna switch things around on the left side. I'm gonna slide the headlight switch in since I'm not gonna be using that too often while I'm actively riding. So I'm gonna put the regen brake in closest. Also not sure if I'll be using this often, but I think it's gonna feel the most natural having it close here. Next, I'm gonna throw on the left hand controls. I thought it was pretty interesting how they have these assembled. I've never seen that before. I think it actually ends up looking clean. I'm glad I went with a three inch display. I think it looks very at home there. I initially ordered it with a five inch, but I'm glad I went with the three inch on the smaller bike. I can't even imagine what the seven inch would look like. You know, I really can't hate too much on that sleeving that Yasma used because it actually works really well for cable management. I think it cleaned up six wires pretty well. What I'm doing here is routing all the cables behind the front number plate, and then I'm gonna have them come through the top of the opening on the frame, right above the controller, and then I'll do all the wiring and clean everything up in this area above the battery. Before we continue, if you're enjoying today's video so far, do me a favor and hit that like button. And if you like this kind of content, wanna keep up with the Yasma project, or any of my other bikes, consider subscribing to this channel and turn your bell notification on. And if you're interested in checking out any of the parts that we're using for today's project, I'll have the full build list in the description below. If you wanna get yourself a Yasma IN10 or any parts from Ride or Die or even Sotion, you can actually get yourself 5% off by using discount code PADOUTDOORS. After closely reviewing the wiring harness that's attached to this Moxon controller, 
It does look like we're gonna have to switch out two of the connectors. Since this harness was pre-wired for a Suron, I'm gonna have to swap out the connector for the throttle along with the ignition switch since it's going from male to male. The plug swap for the ignition switch is super simple. It's just two wires. I'm just gonna install the male plug from the stock harness. All it really does is complete a circuit when the ignition's keyed on. And then for the throttle, same deal. I'm gonna swap over the one from the stock harness. It's just three wires. They're actually the same exact colors, black, red, and green, which are positive ground and five volt signal. So these posts are threaded on both sides. You just have to hold it in place with a pair of pliers and take out the bolts with a five mil Allen. Okay, well, I don't even know how we rounded off this one bolt. That's how you take that off. All right, I'm gonna feed the harness through to the top side of the frame. And then we're gonna try to seat the controller in place and see what we have to do to get it mounted. It actually seems like it has a decent amount of clearance all around. And I have an idea where I'm gonna mount it up top. Though the bottom, actually I might be able to make something work at the bottom as well. It gives me a good starting point where I'm going to drill the mounting holes. What I did here is I drilled some 3 8 holes so I can install some rib nuts on the top side of the frame like that and use some heavier duty bolts to hold the top of the controller in place. But before I install these threaded nuts in place, I'm gonna hit this with some spray paint. You don't wanna leave bare metal exposed like that because it could cause corrosion in the future. I'm also gonna clean up the backside with a Dremel. And here's a closer look at how that turned out. I was a little bit offset on the right one, but overall I think it looks pretty good. I normally mount these terminals the other way, but these actually clear both ways and I'm trying to keep it as low profile as possible since it does come pretty close to the frame. Kind of wish that Moxon had these labeled, at least color coded blue, green, and yellow, like most controllers such as the far driver and the nuclear. But I guess it doesn't really matter when it self learns, but I just followed the diagram that came with the user manual. Phase wires you don't want to mess around with. You want to make sure these are super tight. If these come loose and ground on each other, it could potentially cause a fire. to feed the left and right control plugs but luckily there's just enough of a gap to fit them between the frame and the controller. All this empty space around the controller is going to be filled up. Once we reinstall the covers I'm definitely going to have to cut quite a bit of material from the center. We'll do that when we're cleaning things up on the next video. For now I want to finish connecting everything to the controller and connecting it to the battery and make sure everything powers up correctly. Well that's good. I don't have to trim anything with the skid plate. The controller clears it fully and the phase wires, there's no 
additional tension or anything. I was able to pull everything through above the controller except for the factory headlight switch. So I'm gonna have to figure this out on the next video. I still have to install a voltage step down converter anyway, because I wanna put some 12 volt lighting accessories on this. But for now, let's just get the controller working. I'm just gonna start plugging away one connector at a time from the throttle to the right hand controls, the regen, left hand controls, the display, the ignition switch, and the hall sensor for the motor. I believe those are the bare minimums just to get the Moxin controller functional. And all the connectors from the controller harness are labeled straight from Moxin, so that kind of keeps things easy. Here's that hall sensor to encoder adapter. Obviously, you don't need to use this if you decided to go with the Soshin motor that has the encoder sensor. The Yosma doesn't have a horn like the Suron, so we're going to leave this unplugged. There's actually quite a few plugs that we're not going to use, such as the kickstand sensor. These smaller dirt bikes are really bare bones and don't have as many features as a Suron, but that does give us the option of adding some if we want to in the future. And for now, I'm borrowing the battery that I have in my Tudio, which is a 72 volt, 20 amp power with a peak output of 250 phase amps, 200 continuous. So this should be able to do at least 14 kilowatts. Obviously, this is not how I'm going to leave it. This is just for testing purposes. I'm also going to mount the battery in the next video. I just want to make sure that this thing is fully functional. Okay, tell me the truth. That's not good. Okay, I had a suspicion that this battery power supply plug was important. I was under the impression that that was for the 12 volt accessories and power supply for the voltage step down converter, but I will hook that up to the battery positive and negative since this harness might be using it to trigger the signal wire. Luckily, I can steal the matching connector needed from one of my old Telario Triple X harnesses. Here's a look at the harness that I just mocked up. What I'm gonna do here is loosen the controller bolts again and let it hang just so we have enough space to bolt these on the positive and negative terminals on top of the controller. And then we'll snake the harness up through the top of the frame and have this side connected to the battery power supply plug on the controller harness. All right, we got the signal wire harness added. Moment of truth. Sweet. There it is guys. 83.6 volts, which is fully charged for the Amorge battery. And we can't use this just yet. We're gonna have to do some tuning. We have to program the controller to function with the brand new Soshin motor that we just installed on there. And we also have to put the limitations for the battery. I might have to hit up Billy from Electric RVA just for some tips on how to properly set up the controller before we take this bike out for the first time. Now, this is just the most basic way to get your Moxin controller installed and functional, but there's still quite a few things I gotta do before I call this done. I wanna properly secure the bottom of the controller, trim the plastics on the front of the frame, just to clean up the front end and also clean up the wiring above the battery area. Now this Moxin controller was wired up for a Suron. That's why I had to do a couple things to make it work with this bike. But I'm glad that we did this experiment because now we know we can pretty much throw this controller on any of my electric bikes as long as it has the supporting battery and a motor that's strong enough to take the power. Stay tuned for the next video in the Yasma build series if you wanna see this controller tune and set up process and see this bike on the road. Comment below how fast you think this bike is gonna go out on the street. I'm going to have it set to 200 line amps and 600 phase amps at first and go from there. If you are interested in checking out any of the parts that we used for this project so far, I'll have the full build list in the description below. If you want to get yourself a Yasma IN10, you can get yourself 5% off using discount code PADOUTDOORS. If you enjoyed today's video, do me a favor and hit that like button. If you like this kind of content and want to keep up with this project or any of my other bikes, consider subscribing to this channel and turn your bell notification on. But this is going to be it for today. Thank you for watching.